Hello everybody and welcome back to my Java game tutorial series. In the last episode we started the inventory. There's nothing really to show yet, so we, even if we run the game, it won't give us anything. But by the end of this episode, hopefully we will have something to show. So as you can see, it just shows us this. And it's pretty cool, but we don't have an inventory, so that kind of sucks. In this episode we are going to create the actual inventory class that renders the inventory and manages it and stuff. So, of course, we're going to create a new class in the inventory package and call it inventory. Alright. Now this is going to take a private int x and a y. And it's also going to have a private int width and height. There we go. Alright, like that. And then we are also going to have a private copy on right array list and this is going to be an array list of item slots like that there we go and then we're going to do item slots there we go and now we're going to create an inventory uh, constructor like that nope that's not how you spell inventory is it Nope, obviously not. Okay, there we go. So now we're gonna. S this is gonna take in an int x and int y. That's it. That's all it's gonna take. So now we're gonna set this dot x equal to x. Oh, and this dot y equal to y. There we go. Don't worry about the width. We're gonna set that later. So now, up here, we're going to add a few more things. We're going to add the public int num rows. Actually, we'll put columns first, because x comes first and columns is x. And the public int... Actually, we're going to make them private. There we go. Private int num rows. Like that. Now we're going to set these. So the number of columns is going to be equal to 6, and the number... No. Yep, and the number of rows is going to be equal to 4, like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a for loop. And we're going to loop over int i, like that. And pretty much, it, while i is less than the number of columns, i++, plus plus, and inside of this we're going to do another for loop. And it's going to be int j. I already preset that for us, that's pretty awesome. There we go, and while j is less than num rows, we're going to add 1 to it every time. So, there we go. We have that set up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a loop, an uh, if loop, or whatever it's called. Whoops, it's probably not called an if loop. Anyways, we're going to if statement. We're going to create an if statement, and in this if statement, we're going to put if i... Actually, wait a minute. It, no, if j is equal, no, less than, yeah, less than, okay, I'm doing this wrong, sorry about that. So if j is equal, equal to, I'm going to do the number of rows minus one. Then, we're going to do x plus 40. Actually, we'll put maybe 35. Yeah, there we go. I'll show you... Okay, this has to be y, and this has to be a plus equals. I'll show you why that is going to happen in a little while. Actually, I'll tell you now. It's for the hot bar on the bottom. We want that to be separated from the normal kind of, I guess, rows. So, anyways. Then we're going to copy this. Down here, we're going to put y minus equals. So in the middle here, I'm doing these two loops. We're going to put item slots. Yep, yeah, item slots. Dot. Add. And we're going to create a new item slot. Now here's where it gets kind of messy. What we're going to do is we're going to add x plus, and we're going to put brackets here. And we're going to put j times then we're going to put more brackets. And in here, we are going to put 
item slot dot slot size plus 10. Just like that. That is all we have to do. Now we're going to copy that over to the Y. So Y plus in brackets and this actually here has to be I. Y plus J um, pl no, plus, yeah, J in brackets times and in brackets we're going to do item slot dot slot size. And if for the item stack we're just going to put no like that there we go. That is it. We're going to remove these extra spaces here. Now what this is going to do is it's pretty much going to add a new item slot to the item slots. Alright, so now we're going to create a public void render. And before I forget, down here we're going to do width equals um, and we're gonna copy what are we gonna write? We're gonna write number of columns times and we're gonna put this in brackets what we are timesing it by item slot dot item slot size plus 10 just like that and then we're gonna copy this control C control V and set the height equal to the number of rows times that plus 10 plus 35 just like that that's it so now we're going to go back to this render method here and we're actually going to change it to a tick because we want tick to come first and what this is going to do is it's going to loop through a for loop and it's going to be for item slot um, is in item slots just like that, we're going to do is.tick, just like that. So now we're going to create a public void render. There we go, and we're going to pass graphics g into it. That's, this is becoming kind of regular, so you should be getting the hang of it. I'm not going to explain it as much anymore. There we go. And then make sure to import that. And now, let me quickly give us some more space so we can see. And we're going to do g dot set color to color dot light gray, just like that. And we're going to do g dot draw a rectangle. We're going to draw it at x minus 17, y minus 17, width plus um, 30, and height plus 30. There we go. And now we're going to copy this. We're going to make sure this is fill rect here. Sorry about that. And we're going to copy this just like so. I'm going to paste it down here. I'm going to set color to dot black. And we're going to set this to draw rect. Now, basically, this is going to do what we did in the item slot class. And it's basically just going to create a nice little border, and it's going to look a lot cleaner. There we go. And now we want to make sure we render the item slot, so we're going to copy this. Paste it down. Oh, paste it down here. And we're going to put is.render. Just like that. Remove this, extra, remove this extra space. Make sure to add that bracket back. And our inventory class is complete. So now we're going to work on getting this actually rendered. So we're going to open up our world, just like so. And in here, we're going to create, right beside player, we're going to create a public inventory, inventory, just like so. Okay. And now, just under player again, we're going to do inventory equals a new inventory. And we're going to set the X to 80 and the Y to 40. There we go. And in the tick, we're going to do after P dot tick, we're going to do um, inventory dot tick. And 
below the render, we're going to do inventory dot render. There we go. And just like that, we have it done. So if we run it, we have no pointer exception. Sorry, you can't see that. I'll quickly open it up. Okay, so this is a really simple mistake. Sorry about it. After the this.x and this.y, what we're going to do is item slots equals a new copy on right array list, just like that. And now, if we run it, if it doesn't give us any errors, and if it works, we have our inventory. Look at that. Now, we can make the text box a little bit bigger. So, basically, all we have to do for that is go into the... Let's see where it is. Into the item slot class, and we can change the slot size. And now this will change everything else to... It's pretty dynamic, I guess you could say. Like that. And wait for it to load. Look at that. Now we could even change it even higher. And you can make this however big you want. You can make the slot sizes bigger, smaller. You can make the actual screen bigger, smaller. This is it's all up to you. Now, you may notice a little problem here. You see here there's no spaces. That's because we forgot to do yet another thing. Basically, if you go into the inventory class, right here, where we did slot size, we forgot to add 10. There we go. And now, if I'm correct, which I really hope I am, we are done. There we go. Look at that. We are done this episode. So, in this episode, we managed to create an inventory. Now, it's not functional yet, but that's next episode. In the next episode, we are going to add mouse functionality, so you will be able to move stuff, as well as being able to open it and close it with a button. The next episode is probably going to be a little bit longer, because this is the hardest part of it, but I think this episode is done. So, as always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.